Yo, what is good, YouTube? Krishan checking back in with another video. In the first update of the day, we have a recent physique update from Chris Bumstead. And I know it's not much, guys, but we haven't really talked about Chris Bumstead since the Olympia. But everything pretty much still stands the same, guys. I still think Chris is going to be pretty much unbeatable until he decides to retire, which is why we don't talk about him too much on the channel. But Chris did say in his post this year, he's trying to get the most out of doing the least. So I would guess, you know, he's trying to do this as healthy as possible. So, you know, the least amount of super supplements and the least amount of food probably would while still, you know, growing and slightly improving. But the look that Chris has, honestly, it's going to be hard for the competitions to even catch up to the 2020 version of Chris Bumstead, let alone the version that he brought last year. But let me know in the comment section below, guys, what are you guys' thoughts on Chris Bumstead? Like I said, I don't too much mention him on the channel because I think it's pretty much repetitive. I think Chris is going to come in, you know, keep winning titles until he decides not to. And in the next update of the day, we have physique update from Terrence Ruffin. Now, this is confirmed to be recent, but Terrence didn't leave a weight in the comment section below. But as you guys can see here, I'm pretty sure Terrence is at least 10, 20, maybe 25 pounds above the weight cap. And I'm going to mention this, guys, every time. Hopefully someone from the IFBB watches my video. The classic weight cap should be raised by probably five to seven pounds. And I'm not sure if they should raise it across the board. Probably should go ahead and do that. But at least with the shorter guys specifically. But I mean, it really wouldn't be fair. So across the board, I believe the weight cap should go up five to seven pounds. Because Terrence Ruffin is still a classic bodybuilder here, guys. And he's, I'm pretty sure, at least, like I said, 10 to 20 pounds above the weight cap. And coming in a lot bigger would give the shorter guys a chance to compete with the taller guys. So let me know in the comment section below, guys. What do you think? Do you guys think the weight cap should be increased in this classic physique division? In the next update of the day, we have a physique update from Breon Ainsley. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, Breon will be hopping into a show before the Mr. Olympia. I'm pretty sure that will be the Tampa Pro, could possibly be the Texas Pro. But this is Breon Ainsley at 17 weeks out, guys. And me being completely honest here, um, I think it's going to be really hard for Breon if he decides to go up to the 212 division, which he honestly has already committed to. You know, I think Breon would probably be better off staying in the classic physique division. Taking a look at him here, his legs just seem to be a little bit downsized, and I thought it was mostly from him having to diet down for the division. But once again, Breon is in his 40s. I think he'll have a hard time in the quad department in the 212 division. But that's just my personal thoughts on that, guys. I believe Breon can still stay in the classic division and still place, you know, I believe he can still place as high as second in the division. In all honesty, but let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about Breon Ainsley. I just believe Breon is a classic bodybuilder, guys. I don't think he is a 212 bodybuilder, but that's just my personal thoughts on Breon Ainsley. And in the next story of the day, we have a physique update from Rafa Brandeo. And this is a three weeks out from the Arnold Classic Brazil. So Rafa has just been pretty much putting out these most muscular updates, not really showing too much. We have seen a couple back updates, and he definitely looks improved. As you guys know, he's been training at the Dragon's Lair with Flex Lewis. Also, guys like Milo Sarchev, uh, Jay Cutler around there a lot, Dennis Wolf. So very excited to see the package that he brings to this Arnold Brazil. And still not sure if anyone else is doing that show yet. And in the next story of the day, physique updates from Justin Rodriguez, the most consistent man on Instagram. So these updates are at four weeks out from the Indy Pro, maybe four and a half weeks out, and five weeks out from the New York Pro. So once again, guys, if I've said numerous times, I'm very excited to see Justin on both of these stages. Hopefully he can come in and win both of these shows. He will have a challenge in Indy with Charles Griffin, however. We'll talk about Charles Griffin soon. But I believe after these two shows, I'm definitely ready to see Justin take some time off. I'm starting to notice that it seems like his quads are a little downsized maybe, or maybe he just needs some time off to fill his quads up a little more. If I've mentioned to you guys multiple times, Justin has been prepping since probably February or March of last year. So Justin has been in prep for probably at least a year, guys, and he's still killing it. I still think he could come in and do pretty good at these shows, but I think after Justin gets a good offseason after these two shows, we're going to see an even better Justin Rodriguez going into this year's Mr. Olympia and the next year's Arnold Classic, guys. And speaking of the Indy Pro, we have physique updates from Charles Griffin. Now, this most muscular impressed me a lot, guys, and I'm actually very excited to see Charles versus Justin Rodriguez at this show. 
Prior to the seeing the recent updates of Charles Griffin, I honestly thought Justin Rodriguez was going to run away with the show. But after these recent updates, guys, I may do a comparison video on Justin Rodriguez versus Charles Griffin. I'm not saying, you know, Charles will automatically beat Justin, but I think he'll stack up pretty well. So let me know in the comment section if you guys would be interested in seeing that prior to the Indy Pro. And in the next update of the day, Sergio Oliva Jr. is back, guys. And Sergio is one of my favorite people in the sport. Now, if you guys don't know uh, Sergio, I think he lost his Instagram for a little while. So a lot of us thought that he probably deleted it, but he said he lost it and he just now getting it back. So the picture on the left, I'm not sure when it was from, but it was posted recently. The picture on the right is confirmed recent. And in the comment of this video, Sergio says he will be moving to Dubai. Dubai. He said he had a very hard time last year. He's not sure how long he will be in Dubai, but he also mentioned that he left his supplement company, which is Victory Clothing, and he also said that he really wants to get back to that Olympia stage. Hasn't been there in four years, so Sergio is just trying to get everything back on track and just trying to get the love for bodybuilding that he had from the beginning. So very excited for this guy. Sergio is one of my favorite athletes in the sport. You know, I really like his physique, but also like, you know, the personality and uh, the person he is. I follow him on Instagram and I like a, a lot of his posts. And of course, he's the son of a Mr. Olympia. So, I mean, how can you not like Sergio, guys? But very, very happy to see Sergio back, man, and ready to see him hop on that stage. Ready to see some of those posing routines again, man. In the next update of the day, we have physique updates from her son, Mustafa. Now, I thought her son was actually going to be doing Indy and New York, but from the comments of this post, he said he will be doing the Orlando Pro. Now, what I can say about her son from here is he looks incredible in the upper body. Crazy Grainy actually defined he probably looks ahead of schedule as far as his prep is going, but her son is still struggling to have a lot of separation and a lot of detail in the lower body. Now, I did notice when William Bonek had bigger quads, he didn't have as much separation or cross striations. And even though his quads downsized due to injury, I noticed once the quads got smaller, they actually had a lot more detail. So I wonder with guys like, you know, Moshe Bun, uh, Hassan Mustafa, and Big Rami Crazy, how it seems like all of the Egyptian guys have huge quads. But I wonder if those guys were able to downsize the quads a little bit, would it have a lot more separation? But I'm going to mention Hassan here and there, guys, here and there. We had very high hopes for him last year, but sadly, Hassan hasn't really been meeting them i think his son is putting in the work guys he was working with chris aceto i'm not sure what it is with his son guys but i keep you guys notified and hopefully he's able to bring it all together for this orlando show because his son is truly a freak and in the last story of the day we have physique updates from dan covia anderson and this is at five weeks out from the new york pro now, a lot of you guys, I'm pretty sure none of us maybe know who this guy is. And the only reason I know who he is is because the Anabolic Chicken on YouTube, huge shout out to him, actually made a comparison on him from a show that he did in Texas. I believe it was the Texas State Pro. But I'm very excited to see him at the New York Pro stage, guys. And you guys can see here, this guy has an incredible structure. When he hits his front double, he doesn't pull his biceps all the way in to make them peak more. I'm not sure why. But physique reminds me a lot of Terrence Ruffin, guys. I'm not sure how far he is from the weight cap, but this guy is very classic, you know. I may actually like to see him compared to a guy like uh, Tony Dong, who was actually pronounced Tony Yoon. But this guy is incredible, and I will be looking forward to seeing him on the New York Pro stage. But I hope you guys did indeed enjoy this video, man. Like, comment, sub to the channel, guys. It's free. I like free stuff. I'm out.